so edge computing industry has been expanding, right? You guys see edge computing in telecommunication, manufacturing, retail, healthcare, transportation, public sector, and many others, right? So what is so powerful about edge computing? Edge computing bring memory and computational power closer to the location where the data is needed. So this is an example of a US military base. They set up edge computing in a hostile environment, small container, small base, space, uh, really bad networking connection. They need real-time data for logistics and it's mostly used for saving human life. This is another example of edge computing mobile classroom. When we don't have enough classroom in the school, we have limited connectivity, unstable power supply. Uh, the portable infrastructure um, is, is very flexible. You can move it from one location to another. Uh, it also depends on the materials and the instructor being on the mobile classroom. Um, the airplane office at Air Force One is another example, right? Um, it depends heavily on uh, Wi-Fi or external connectivity on the airplane. Happen during war situation when we don't want to identify the physical location of the president. A known enemy um, usually come up with defense strategy within the office. Um, a lot of time during the war, the cell phone tower may be destroyed. So. So we need to take into account of all these different um, scenarios. Um, so one of the projects I worked on earlier is about uh, commercial telematics that also leverage heavily on edge computing. Um, the company uh, leverage um, different sensors on the truck to keep track of the telematic data, the truck low, right, the temperature of the uh, truck tire, the driver's um, uh, driving record right and so on so in that project we heavily depends on the telematic control unit so we have a, a, a like a, a small micro uh, controller chip that will install a different part of the truck to gather the telematic data so edge computing um, in, in theory it plays the workload closer to the device where the data was created and then you can take action as soon as the data is available. So going back to the telematic data as an example, um, it gather from the device and make, and then send the uh, data uh, to the cloud and make it available. Um, so how do we send the data from the device to the cloud? This depends on the 5G network that open up the computational capacity into the devices. This is an uh, architecture a high level overview of using uh, Ansible at different layer of the architecture. So at the trunk, you have the edge devices that go through the 5G network. Then you have the edge node and then the edge node will communicate to the cloud such as you know, OpenShift or AWS. So now we know the edge benefit um, focused on the workload where the workload is located. Um, it migrate a network-centric service to the workload-centric service. It's a highly distributed architecture and it react really fast. Um, so you can see that, you know, this architecture reduce the latency of the data. Um, it saves the bandwidth, right? By reduce, reducing the amount of data need to travel, uh, travel back and forth between, between the device to the, to, to the, to the, um, the edge layer, um, it increased the resiliency, right? By doing continuous uh, business operation in the event on, of unexpected um, situation. And also the data sovereignty, right? That meet the standard of the compliance and requirements, right? So dealing with large data at the edge, sometimes
would be moved up to the cloud layer for further computation because it requires more computational power. So a lot of time the edge node is a piece of IT uh, equipment, or right? it could be a, a small server, it could be you know a small device. So in the vehicle, for example, we have different sensors. We have GPS, navigation, radio, the camera that take the pictures and process the uh, video uh, analysis, right? The internal CPU, GPU of the car system. So these are all examples of edge devices. Um, so for computational capacity, capability, we have increased significantly in the edge devices. Some edge devices were running in Linux. So we could deploy containerized workload to the edge devices uh, and then do the workload at the edge devices. Um, so since we are dealing with different types of devices, we can think about there were hundreds of millions of edge devices. It's important to in enforce the edge security. We want to ensure that the immutable device provisioning is happening. Right, so they were all going through the uniform um, configuration for these devices. Uh, you know, TPM trusted platform module to be enabled. Um, data encryption is important. We don't want to lose any data during the transaction. Um, networking encryption is also important. Uh, we want to enable you know surface account access. So meaning that you know when you access the edge device configuration, you should not be using your own account. You should always, always, always use, use the service account. So that would guarantee and ensure uniformity. And, and the key of accessing these devices, the security key or token needs to be rotation. It needs to be rotated every you know, one week or one month to ensure the security will not jeopardize. So, so now the next question would be, how do we manage all these different environments, right? How do we ensure that the right workload were deployed to the, at a specific time? So we leverage uh, Ansible architecture, right? Setting up Ansible playbook and Ansible tower, we can uh, ensure that the deployment were deployed at a schedule or, or triggered by a specific notification so that all this deployment would happen at the same time. Um, and Ansible also have a management layer that could talk to Amazon Web Services, Google Cloud and uh, Computation Engine, uh, OpenStack and Microsoft Azure, right? So using that um, Ansible management layer, we are able to manage the uh, deployment status, looking at you know deploy, deployment failure, we can roll back the deployment. And, and then we could uh, set up you know, health monitoring and alert notification based on the deployment. So as we noticed earlier, right, Ansible cloud module is heavily used during the edge computing, right? It support uh, multiple module packages. It could talk to Amazon AWS, talk to Azure, talk to OpenStack, talk to Google, talk to Docker talk to uh, VMware and so on, right? It has a lot, a lot of uh, uh, rich functionality and example code that you could look at to do the edge computing. So I just pull out a, a few examples here to showcase how, how this could be done, right? This is an example of an Ansible certification management. You set up a playbook, for example, and then you have three different tasks. The first one is to create you know, create a challenge for a specific domain using an account key from a variable, right? And after that, the um, certification is created. Second step, you could copy the search from one destination to another location when a specific uh, condition open uh, is, is uh, executed. And then the last task is to basically let the uh, challenger uh, to, to be validated and we shift the search and uh, intermediate intermediate search. So, so you can set up the, the, the configuration in your deployment to, to get the certificate as soon as the certificate is available. Yeah, so this is an example of an Ansible playbook dealing with certification. Uh, so earlier we talked about uh, security use, uh, ensuring that TPM is enabled. This is an Ansible playbook that you could use for enabling the TPM, right? So first, 
it contains three tasks. The first task is to install the TPM package. The second one is using the The first task is to create a new IAM user with API key right, using the IAM module. And then the second task is create an IAM role with a specific trust relationship after the user is created. This is also using the IAM module. Yeah, all this, you know, you can think about all these examples about the um, Ansible uh, cloud module. The Ansible managed user role, right? Um, so these are two examples where you can uh, create a user, grant a user specific user role, pretty straightforward. Um, and then Ansible deployment. Um, we, a lot of time we use um, uh, one playbook to call multiple smaller playbooks, right? So this is a example of a deployment orchestration, right? At the orchestration layer, we could call one playbook to configure the TVM host, one playbook to provision install IDM, right? one playbook to install the director, one playbook to install the OpenStack over cloud, and and we can one, do one playbook to install and configure a uh, tower, and the last playbook to do the cloud form configuration. So, so we have a lot of technical problem, right? So we have the number of edge devices are very high, and you know we have 50 to 100 billions of devices in the field and these devices come in different form and configuration um, we kind of talk about security right we have the data associated with the edge devices needs to be protected right it's not possible to do a manual deployment given the the scale of these different devices and you need a way to distribute the workload to billions of devices and you can see these technical problems were kind of taken care by Ansible, right? Um, so you look at the example earlier, we have uniformity, um, ensure consistency, uh, security and scale and reliability across all these nodes. Um, it's important to prov provision standardization of the nodes um, and we can deploy the appropriate application resources based on their purpose, right? Um, we could also hook up Ansible to open shift and make sure that the new deployment um, could be um, um, used with you know open shift orchestration layer. Right. So this is an example of the edge deployment with Ansible. You have different edge tiers, right? Uh, on the left side, we have the devices usually you know come with one one server. And then as you go to the left, you have you go through the end user premises edge, right? And then and, and then in the center you have the provider far edge. You know the provider edge are kind of you know at the um, at the infrastructure layer, right? So this is the layer that 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 usually will be at the um, you know some of them will, will you know closer to the edge would be one of the uh, infrastructure location that were locally set up within the region, right? Um, so that's the provider edge, and then the far right you have the provider and enterprise core. Right? So this is your core data center that could be you know across multiple region. So as you see, move from the left to the right, the number of uh, machine will, will get increased and you'll get more computational power and more uh, reliability and resiliency. So, so this is, you know, high level, you know, edge deployment follow this um, architecture. And, you know, as you get, you know, uh, reliable, rel more reliable connection, um, you can do more data analysis, right? right? You, can, you can do machine learning, you can do, you know, different uh, data segregation, right? Doing that when you have more reliable connection. When you have weak connection, on the other hand, right? You need to, um, you know, do a lot more, you know, you, you need to basically break down your task into smaller tasks and make it retriable. So when the task, right, fail, you want to retry it immediately, right? And then when the data was lost, you want to get the data again and compute the data from the next availability. So, so, so you need to deal with that type of computation a little bit differently when you are at the edge. 
So one example we did in the uh, one of our client is to compute the I IFTA, right? IFTA stands for International Fuel Tax Agreement. Uh, so each state in the U United States have their own IFTA law. So when you are driving through a state, it will calculate how much money you need to pay for to, for a specific state, right? Um, for gasoline, for um, you know using the highway, right? For the time um, your vehicle is in that state for transportation, right? And then you can see, for example, we have two destinations on the map. If the calculation, right, we need the real-time data from telematic devices. Uh, we 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 revolve the GPS based on uh, different mileage, based on different time spent in each jurisdiction. Optimize operational so that we could get the lowest cost and uh, through the uh, state to station uh, transportation. And this is where we leverage edge computing with Ansible. Right. Um, this is another example we use for telematic image with Ansible. Um, when we have different truck driver driving at the Bay Area, we want to get the um, the accident location so that we can inform other edge devices, uh, other driver where the accident could happen. Right. Um, so, yes. Eight, eight, eight minutes. Ten minutes. Okay. Um, yeah, so we still have time. So, um, so based on the telematic image and uh, edge computing, the road condition is analysis. And um, and then when when it is an accident, it will trigger an alert and notification. Um, so we are solving this computational complex um, uh, problem at the edge layer, and the image will be transmitted through a five G network when the five G network is available. Um, and this would help us, you know, uh, um, perform higher data, more data analysis at the cloud layer, and this. Um, uh, images will be back up at the cloud layer using OpenShift, for example. And this is a high level flow, right? So uh, we use Ansible to capture the truck uh, image, right? And then the image will be tagged with a latitude and longitude and the time frame, right? The image will be saved at the edge node. So uh, machine learning uh, will flag the warm uh, images that will uh, contain accident uh, conditions, for example, right? When an accident is identified, it will trigger an alert based on the image analysis output, and it will send the alert back to other edge devices within the range of the log latitude and longitude. And then that will trigger a GPS calculation, right? So this is an example of a uh, Ansible um, uh, 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 computational on the edge. Um, the telematic image with the Ansible uh, containerized, application is containerized. Um, we support GPU. <clears throat> we have a latency uh, from the uh, edge to the edge, no less than 200 milliseconds. Uh, we have a machine learning program scanning image, and the latency is less than 300 milliseconds. The bandwidth <clears throat> of uh, five megabytes per second upload per telematic edge devices were <clears throat> were able to uh, uh, happen. So these are different images, right? That you can imagine, right? If you are using your camera. To, to check the uh, world condition. <laughs> and then at the end, right, you can think about running all this job within minutes or miles with, with real time visibility into uh, telematic. So this is really helpful, right? I mean, uh, and then at the end, you know, the, the job company were able to uh, reduce operational costs and save money. Um, so, yeah, so at the end, you know, we, in conclusion, we were able to use edge computing with Ansible that enable easy and highly distributed event-driven transaction logs and, um, and with stable microservices deployment. Uh, edge computing with 5G network offer fast and reliable solutions for different problems. The event uh, stream can be created based on log level change. Application listen to the events and perform action based on data change. Um, at the end, edge computing is an open source uh, uh, framework. It works really well with any programming languages and development frameworks. So that's the end of the presentation. Thank you very much. Uh, so Lucio, um, can you see if we have any Q and A on the on the chat? Yeah, we have a question. Uh, 
we, we were working with in a project to improve safety in roads in Colombia. Uh -huh. So your project, your project seems perfect for the for the way we are doing here the the, the solution. What is the main problem when you put the images on the uh, edge and you try to download to a server if you have a low la a low latency uh, uh, no pro latency problems in the network? Yeah. So yeah. So uh, the, the, the right. stream. Uh -huh. Yeah. So um, yeah. So so there's a a, a technical um, challenge that we faced earlier about low latency, right? <clears throat> Initially, um, the the company uh, wants to upload a video stream from the edge device to to the cloud, um, but but it depends on five uh, G network availability. So the problem mm -hmm. is when it is driving through some of the state where it does not have a good network network connection the video stream were not able to upload, right? So, so at the end, uh, we need to come up with a way to break down the video stream into different images based on sampling. So let's say you have a video stream of, uh, of one hour, right? We, we, we basically need to break down it so that, you know, we, we do a sample of, you know, every five minutes and then use that as a start, starting point and then measure the bandwidth to see if this is a feasible solution, because edge computing depends heavily, heavily on the network connectivity. Yeah. <clears throat> so, mm -hmm. so you you will need to uh, uh, do some testing and do some adjustment based on your experiment. <clears throat> yeah. So so if you are driving in the city, that's probably okay, right? You can do video stream and upload the whole stream, right? But if you are driving, you know, outside of the city, then then you no. Know, uh, video sampling, um, and and even you can do um, you know machine learning to to uh, to to do some you know sample based on based on the production data using a feedback loop, right? Um, and then that's what we did. So um, yeah, so so this is still a pop, it's still a challenge, and 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 also you know the the retry logic needs to be uh, um, needs to be implemented, right? Because the, the network sometimes is not available in one minute, but it may come up in, in the next minute. So we keep retrying, right? But but however, you cannot retry indefinitely. So we put in, you know, a circuit breaker, for example, right? The first time you retry, you wait for, um, uh, you know, five seconds, and then the second time you wait for 15 seconds, right? The, the mm. retry will gradually increase so that you don't get into any uh, DOS or and, and any you know and any DOS attack that would turn your server down. So so there's a lot of different configuration we need to take into the picture. But yeah, so but you know this, this is a, a challenging project, and you know that there, there's a, a you know a, a lot to consider. Yeah. Muchas gracias, Sam. Yeah. Thank you.